Hi everybody, welcome back to A Chef's Kitchen uh, in downtown historic Williamsburg, Virginia. Today we're going to make a really quick cooked meringue. And uh, it's important to cook meringues nowadays, especially because of um, the sanitation issues with eggs. We're going to uh, cook it well above 145 degrees, which will kill the bacteria, number one. Number two, cooked meringues taste a lot better than uncooked meringues. And number three, they're much more stable. There'll be a, a lot less weeping of liquid out of this. So this, this is a very basic meringue recipe that you can use for lemon meringue pies, uh, baked Alaskas, uh, numerous uh, things, chocolate mousses, but if you, if you do it this way, it's really quick and really easy. We're going to start with almost equal parts of eggs, egg whites, uh, to sugar. It's imperative that the egg whites are very clean, meaning no fat, no fat from the egg yolk, no residual fat from the measuring uh, device, whatever, uh, and, and no fat in the bowl. Uh, so, likewise, um, here we have almost equal parts, about three-fourths of a cup of egg whites uh, to um, a little bit more sugar, about one, one cup of sugar. <laughs> it's as easy as this. Now, here's my bowl that I'm going to use uh, to mix this up in. I've got a little bit of vinegar here to ensure that the uh, bowl is clean, uh, grease-free, no oil residue whatsoever, and also this little bit of acid that we're incorporating uh, into the recipe will act kind of like tartaric acid or cream of tartar. And uh, we're killing two birds with one stone here by making sure the bowl is clean and uh, the added acid will also give this meringue a little stability. So, just basically two ingredients. You can add a little uh, vanilla to this if you like, but uh, just, just, uh, we'll just do the basic egg white with sugar. Now, I'm going to take these over to a pot of barely uh, simmering water here and start uh, heating this up. I, I don't use a whisk at this point because uh, the meringue will start to actually uh, turn itself into a meringue in this, dur during this uh, process, during the whipping process. All we're trying to do is get these eggs up to about, oh, let's say, 160 degrees. And is, this will take a little while, uh, but, um, and we can rush it along. And why I like using the silicone uh, spatula here, these are not rubber anymore, they're silicone, and uh, they won't melt or deteriorate up to 350, some of them are good to 400 and 500 degrees, uh, so certainly this 160 uh, will not uh, affect this uh, spatula in any way. So I'm just going to, instead of really agitating this and, and, and uh, working it a lot with this spatula, which cools it down, defeats the process, I'm going to just kind of gently stir this. Now, I have a thermometer here, and I just get these from the hardware store. I like the uh, brand um, Taylor, and I'm just used to these um, instant read thermometers. Uh, they're not really instant read. They take about five instances to read them. But I like watching how the temperature uh, sort of graduates through um, the other temperatures before it peaks, as opposed to a digital thermometer, which just goes bink, oops, maybe too late. So I, I like, I'm just used to watching the momentum of these. Very important nowadays, the health department requires us here at a chef's kitchen to cook eggs to at least 145 degrees, which kills bacteria, the salmonella in particular. At about 165 degrees, eggs begin to coagulate. So if you put an egg in a fry pan and the clear part then turns white, that's about 165 degrees. And at 175, they're at their custard stage, and a little later, maybe 185, 190 is when they start to scramble, and we certainly don't want that. So all we're trying to do is get these eggs well above 145, up to about 165, because they taste a lot better. A lot of meringue recipes just call for you to uh, put the raw room temperature egg whites, or cold, uh, into the machine with the sugar. And if you've noticed or ever made lemon meringue pies in that method, you'll notice that the uh, very shortly thereafter, particularly say the next morning, your meringue has wept uh, and is just wanting to slide off the top of that meringue pie. Well, look at this. We're at 150 already and approaching 160. All right, so I'm looking this is going very quickly because of how, how hot I turned that up. Now, I'll start this cooling down a little bit here, and immediately 
we take this over to the uh, machine and start whipping it. You could let this cool down a little bit before you start this process for something where you might be making a, um, a baked Alaska and you don't want to ice the ice cream with really hot meringue or warm meringue. So you could let it cool down. The important thing is that we've got it to that 165 stage. You can see the steam coming up out of this bowl. The bowl is way too hot to touch. So you could start this from a cooler temperature once you've let it cool down a little bit. But we're just going to make it warm. And give this a good whip. This will increase in volume about fourfold and be really shiny and glossy. So we're starting here where it's looking very thin and watery. It'll start to froth and we'll get it to medium or almost to medium stiff pe peaks, I would say. This is absolutely delicious. This is like homemade marshmallow fluff and is what we should be doing uh, when we're folding egg whites into chocolate mousses, for example. A lot of chocolate mousses recipes, a lot of chocolate mousse recipes still call for uh, using raw eggs, in particular with raw yolks. So we would also cook the yolks if we were doing this. All right, so this is on high. All right, so here we have, just moments later, maybe two, two three minutes um, all told. And it is still a little warm to the touch, so that's why I was saying this uh, may be a little bit warm to put directly onto ice cream for something like baked Alaska. But for any other application, uh, this would be beautiful. And you can see the amount of volume that we got. And that medium stiff peak just starts to curl a little bit off the end. And if you noticed, how much was actually in this bowl. We started with about six egg whites, six or seven egg whites, and this is, this is what we're looking at here. Absolutely perfect, delicious. I can really taste the difference in the cooked variety versus the uncooked, uh, and very, very stable. What you'll notice with this particular type of meringue is that once you ice your um, lemon meringue pie, for example, uh, you'll come back in two days and it'll be, still be stuck to the top of the custard without weeping or sliding off at all. And uh, this is completely sanitary. So when you, when you make the other raw meringue, be aware that you're uh, putting raw meringue on, on a cold pie, in the case of lemon meringue pie, and then you're putting it in the oven for just a couple minutes. So it never really cooks through. Uh, it's raw in that state. It stays raw and you're serving it raw. So um, just thought we'd like to share that with you today. A cooked, very basic meringue. A chef's Kitchen in Williamsburg, Virginia. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.